we're moving on now to the studies, okay, these particular studies. And let's talk about Padre de Taveras, Sanskrit in the Tagalog language. This was published in 1884. What was Padre de Taveras saying? So first, he listed Tagalog words he believed had a Sanskrit origin, okay? And then, um, we had new spellings written with Latin characters that correspond more accurately to the orthography of the word according to the ancient Tagalog characters than the letters using Spanish orthography. Okay. So, let's move on now to um, a new orthography. So here, what we're saying is, Laktao, Ped or Pedro Serrano Laktao was advocating for a new orthography. So his dictionary was published in 1889. It's considered to be the first complete dictionary written by a Filipino during the Spanish colonial period. You have to remember that there were dictionaries before this, but all these dictionaries were written by Spaniards. So this was the first one written by a Filipino. Now the scholar Viveca Hernandez, who teaches linguistics at the University of the Philippines, she did a study of Lactau's work. And, um, her study reveals that Lactau actually proposed a new way or a new system of writing. So Lactau claimed that this new system made it is easier to distinguish suffixes from root words. So what did Lactau also do? So he changed eleven the eleven letters from Spanish. So that was what he was proposing. He says we shouldn't use these eleven letters anymore. Okay. Now this is um page from um, Rebecca's study of Lactau. So look at the first column, okay? So these are the old letters, A, C plus O, and U. Now, look at Bago, or new, okay? So this is, the suggestion is to use the letter K, which, the sound of which is Ka, okay? For example, carga, abanico, and hama. Okay, but they are these are there are inconsistencies, and and these are kame and escoba. Okay, then you also have um, c plus e and f, and remember the sanglibutan example earlier that is written down as fanglibutan. Well, he's saying that this should be S, and the sound is Sa. And for example, Sepilio, Palacio. But then there would be inconsistencies such as Cedula and Officio. Okay. So, which would be written as Cedula. So, not as S-E. Okay. Then, there's the old C-H. Okay. Which should now be spelled as T-S or S. With the sound Sa. Something like that. For example, sarol, biscocho. But the inconsistency there would be bachiller, which should be bachiller instead of batsiller. That's why it's in inconsistent. We go now to the letter F, right? And that's the old one. And the proposal of Lactau is to use the letter P, pronounced as pa. For example, pirma, kape. Now, what's the inconsistency? Inferno, instead of saying impierno, okay? Now, you have the letter J, okay? And the new um, letter would now be H or S. So, the sound would be ha and sa. So, for example, justo. Remember? Because it used to be that justo was spelled as J-U-S-T-O and monha, meaning none, right? So n now it used, it used to be that monha was spelled M-O-N-J-A. Now it's monha and later it would be monha and sabon instead of habon, okay? The inconsistency there would be baraha, which should remain as with a J instead of an H. Moving on. Now, let's go to Elie, okay? Now, Elie would become Elie and Y. For example, Martilio and Cuchillo, okay? 
Now, if you look at contemporary orthography, you would see that this would be more, more implemented today. So, for example, martillo would be spelled today M-A-R-T-I-L-Y-O. Let's move on now to enye. Okay, and I'm just going to do this very slowly. Bear with me. So, enye, as the thought proposes, would become N-Y. For example, kanyon, K-A-N-Y-O-N, with the inconsistency being mangimpenyo. Now, this enye would be in and out of the Filipino alphabet through the centuries. For example, so... Um, the enye, the canyon would remain to be spelled canyon with an ny, but the enye would have a comeback in 1987. Okay, now you have q, q, u, and e, and f now to be substituted by k, for example, queso and sakit, right, with the inconsistency being in makipagkilala. The Spanish orthography also had the letters r, r. Okay, so the suggestion of Laktao is to keep it to one R. For example, Gitara instead of Gitara and Pisara instead of Pisara. Okay, but you would have an inconsistency in Koreo, meaning you keep Koreo with a double R. V becomes B and W. For example, Berso and Yawe. Inconsistency being in Vaso, which remains Vaso. X would become S, for example, pelis or pelis, and Z would become S, for example, sulsi, asukal, and the inconsistency being in almires.